What you see before me here is my asparagus patch and it did really well this year. And all of this asparagus I should mention was started from seed, not crown. And we did harvest from it this year. We actually got somewhere on the order of 20, 30 spears. And you could tell that the plants didn't suffer from it. And actually I just noticed today that they are shooting up some new spears again. So that's actually pretty interesting, but I'll probably leave them so they could get more energy stored. But one thing that did become a problem was I barely watered this bed. I barely cared for it whatsoever. And most of the plants made it and are extremely happy and thriving, but some of them did not make it. So we're going to actually be replacing those today. What I have in my hands here are three green asparagus starts, which are gonna go right here, two of them there, one in the front corner there. And then back here, I have six purple asparagus. And all the six purple asparagus are gonna go in a line right here. So we need to do a little bit of cleanup and some amending by adding compost and mulch. So let's go ahead and just get straight into that right now. While I was getting ready to set up and plant these new asparagus starts, I actually just noticed a new problem. This plant right here, the one at my base, is actually a female. The reason you could tell that it's a female is that it has these berries right here. These berries are where all the seeds are produced. So if the plant is spending all its energy to produce seeds, then that means in the next spring, it's going to produce less spears. So generally when it comes to asparagus, you wanna actually only have male plants. Now all these asparagus were started from seed. When you start from seed, it's kind of a roll of the dice. You don't know if you're gonna get male or female. And generally when you plant crowns, they are pre-selected and you're usually only getting males. So that was the cost of using the seeds, but out of all the plants, only one ended up being female. So not a big deal. I'm just going to end up ripping this one out entirely and swapping it in with some of those new seedlings. So let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you the berries and then I'll bring you in a little closer on a male plant so you can see the difference. So there is a close up of the actual leaf of the asparagus with some of the berries on there. You see that they get pretty big and I think they eventually go red when they start ripening. But if you see this on your asparagus plant, it's not the end of the world. You might just get a little less production. And generally the female spears are apparently a little slimmer, which I actually prefer. But in this case, my asparagus isn't that thick anyway, and I'd rather have more production since I only have a small patch. So this plant's gonna go. Now let's go take a look at a male plant. Right here is actually a male plant. So I know it's a male because if you look inside the flowers themselves, if you see any amount of orange essentially, then you know you have a male. Both the female and male plants will produce flowers, but they can be very hard to distinguish. But if you look inside and you see kind of, I believe it's normally called four dots. I don't think that's gonna show up, but I'll bring a close up on my phone. If you see those four orange dots, then you know you have a male plant and you're good to go. So here's a close up of the male plant and it actually has a little bug in there. I'm not sure what that is, but basically if you see that yellow orange color, then you know it's a male. If you see a, a green ball at the bottom of the flower, then it's most likely a female. Now that we know for a fact that this is indeed a female plant, I actually have three transplants. I wish I had four or five of the green variety, but that's fine. I'll do one, two, three, basically swapping in the other asparagus exactly for where this one is. So now I'm gonna grab the plant, try to rip out as many of the crown roots as I can, and we'll probably also dig some out as well. Now we're up close and personal with the asparagus plant itself. So I've got my trusty trowel here. I'm gonna go out from the outside, shove it in and try to pry it. But I think I'm gonna to have to do a combination of prying and pulling. There you have it. This is what a uh, really poor quality asparagus crown would look like. A lot of these roots are broken. Hopefully if you order them, your roots are a lot longer than this. I didn't do quite a good job of extracting all those roots, but I think I definitely got enough of it that it's not coming back. So now let's go ahead and prep this area a little bit and plant out those new seedlings. So I actually decided to excavate the plant so I could see the root system and show you guys up close. And it shows something very interesting about asparagus and that's this guy right here. If you've ever heard of white asparagus, it's usually a delicacy. It's very popular in places like Germany and Austria. But basically the deal is, is that if you bury asparagus underground, usually with a bunch of straw, it is devoid of light, just like you would blanch a leek. And then the asparagus itself remains white, just like this one is here. If it never sees the light of day, then it will stay white. So usually the white asparagus is more tender and that's why it's prized. So that's why people usually go through a lot of work to bury their asparagus to make white spears. It's not a special cultivar. It's just an asparagus that hasn't seen the light of day. 
but let's get back to ripping this guy out. The plan today is to do 12 inch spacing for any of the green asparagus, and we're gonna do 10 inch spacing for the purple asparagus. I'll tell you why that one's a little closer in a bit. So if I come in over here, I'm gonna measure 12 inches out from where that crown stops. And then I have a little hole marked. And then from this one, I'm gonna do the same, 12 inches. Make sure that I'm 12 inches this way, I'm good. And then since I have three plants rather than four, I usually would go one, two, do another two, but I only have one. So I'm gonna do a 12 inch diagonal, which brings me right here in both directions. So now we have that set. I'm probably not going to do much to amend this because as you could see, this asparagus is doing really well on its own. Doesn't need that much. We'll amend more for the purple because I stopped amending it at the edge of this asparagus bed as is. But let's get the starts out and I'll show you what I will do instead. Here are my three green asparagus starts that I'm going to be putting in. This is a variety called UC 157 F2. So F2 means it's a hybrid. The rest of the name, I'm not sure. But this is from the same place that Kevin recently got his starts for his asparagus bed. So I wanted to try them out. So let's take a look at the roots. They are forming a crown. So this is what an asparagus root looks like. It's very thick, it could get very long. It goes very deep. So in this bed here, for example, these roots can end up going like 20 feet into the ground and they're gonna be here for 15 years at least. So in order to give them the best start possible, what I have in this plate here, this little saucer, is actually some mycorrhizal inoculant. This is from Mycos and it's kind of like the most reputable brand of mycorrhizal inoculant that I've seen at least. So I wanna make sure that I have full root contact when I'm applying this. That's how you really make sure that the mycorrhizae attaches to the right spot. What this will do is it'll give this asparagus the advantage of having the mycorrhizal uh, fungi right on its roots already. And what that does is it will actually, it's been actually proven that they'll form a relationship with the roots and that'll help this asparagus plants look for water, look for nutrients and exchange. It'll give sugars to these mycorrhizae. So that's a great way to make sure that, especially when you're doing something like an asparagus plant, I don't wanna come plant this again in another year. Hopefully, of course, this is a male plant, but that's all there is to it. I'm giving it that boost of mycorrhizae. The soil already looks really fantastic because I applied a ton of compost and leaves on top of this before I planted the original crop of asparagus. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just plant out the rest of this asparagus. So there's actually a lot of advice out there for when it comes to transplanting asparagus that you wanna do all these things with trenches and all sorts of fancy little ways of basically making it turn into more work, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> At least here in San Diego, I transplanted all these seedlings just like this at soil level, and as they grow, I just keep adding mulch. So once these new babies grow in a little bit more, I'll come in and I'll probably mulch it up to here, and I'll use a combination of leaves if I can find it, wood chips and straw. And that will give me the best chance of creating a rich soil with a lot of mulch and water retention. So now that these three green asparagus are in, let's go ahead and take a look back here where we're gonna prep it for some purple asparagus. The first thing we need to do is clean up this area a little bit. The idea is that from right where that brick is, I wanna bring in the purple asparagus right next to the green one here. So a couple things I'll point out is I'm gonna rip out some of these plants like this sulfur cosmos here. It's kind of on its way out anyway, and I need this area and anything that's in the way. I'll point out a couple things here. I have some strawberries planted in this section. I never really got much fruit off of it, but asparagus and strawberries are considered a classic companion plant. I just don't think they get enough sun here to fruit, especially when this, once this gets huge and this tree above me starts shading out this area. So I'll probably leave them anyway, just to see how they do. And up front there is actually a rhubarb plant. So that rhubarb plant is doing quite well. I'll definitely want to save that. And we're going to just keep the asparagus right here. So I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup and then we'll add some compost and talk about all that. So I've laid out the general area where I want to plant these asparagus. I'm going to go a foot off the wall there. And then every 10 inches, I'm going to be putting a purple asparagus. I have at least a foot distance from all these crowns here and a foot from this wall here that I could fit all my plants in. The reason why I'm going closer with the purple is that the closer you get, the smaller the spears are. And smaller spears, apparently for purple asparagus, is better because purple asparagus is really good for using raw, eating it on salads, things like that. And I've discovered that I quite like the raw asparagus. So we're gonna plant them a little bit tighter, which is also great because I don't have that much space to spare. So I'm gonna start there, but first I'm gonna clear all the straw out, lay in some of this nice compost, and then start building it in. 
Each one of these plants is now spaced 10 inches across in this trench. You'll notice that I basically dug a trench, dumped all that compost in, but then I didn't just put the plants on there. I actually pulled it aside. And the reason I did that is because I want these plants to be contacting the actual ground that's already been fertile and is already hydrated. This compost is a little bit dry, so I don't want to plant directly into that and then have the problem of rehydrating it. So I'm definitely going to come back in and water this very well because I want to make sure the compost is well watered. But for now, I want it to contact the ground. So let's go ahead, pop all these guys out, give them a little mycorrhizal dust bath and get on to the next step. So there's the root ball. Here's the mycorrhizal powder. You're going to want to put it in and you're going to want to dredge it on all sides. This way you make sure that you have as much contact with the roots as possible because you want it right on the roots. Now that we have them planted, I'm going to just push the compost up against them and essentially mound them up. The last step before watering them in is to spread some mulch on top. This is actually mulch that was made from the tree that's sitting right above it. And all I did is I collected off a bunch of the lower branches and chipped them up. So it's perfect mulch. Let's go ahead and spread it out. Got my sprinkler. We're gonna go ahead and set this guy up and uh, I'm try to do it without getting too wet. The way I like to do that is I pinch the hose like this, then I turn this on and then slowly back off. You know what? I think that was a very solid day. I'm really happy I discovered that female asparagus plant. And again, the reason why that's such a big deal is that if you didn't catch it and those seeds started to fall, you were now self-seeding your bed of asparagus and you saw how hard it was to get those roots out. You don't want a bunch of little asparagus plants popping out, which could then also be female plants. So as soon as you identify them, your best chance is to go ahead and rip them out and replace them as soon as you can. But that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys learned something about asparagus. That was pretty fun, and I'll see you guys next time.